Hi, my name is Kevin Fernandez, and welcome to my channel, Gamers Genie. Today, we're going to learn the thrilling, adventurous game, Forbidden Island. This two to four player game designed by Matt Leacock and published by Game Right Games. Dare to discover Forbidden Island. Join a team of fearless adventurers as you go to collect four sacred treasures from the ruins of this perilous paradise. But be careful because the island is sinking and with every step, it gets closer and closer of you perishing in the watery abyss. Will you die and drown to death? Or will we as successfully escape the island and get away with all four treasures? Now let's, let's go to the table and learn to play Forbidden Island. Shuffle the 24 island tiles and randomly place them face up uh, the non-blue and white side into the grid as follows. First make a 4x4 four four square of tiles in the center of the playing area. Then place two tiles next to each of the middle tiles on every of the square. Important note, leave small gaps in between the tiles. This forms the Forbidden Island and your pawns will move on it like a game board. And through the magic of video editing, we have gone and we have done that for you. So it looks just like this. Place the four treasure figurines, the earth stone, the, stat the statue of the wind, the crystal of fire, and the ocean's chalice. Around the island, your team will try to capture these treasures during the course of the game by discarding four matching treasure cards on a corresponding island tile. Take a moment to locate the eight tiles on which you can claim the treasure. Each treasure can be claimed one on one of two tiles as indicated by the symbol on the bottom left corner. So for example, if I wanted to get the Statue of the Wind, I would go to the Howling Garden or I can go to the Whispering Garden if the Howling Garden is sunk. Uh, if I wanted to get the Ocean's Chalice, I go to the Coral Palace. But if this Coral Palace is sunk or I'm too far away from it, I can go to the Tidal Palace. And, you know, same thing with the Fire Crystal. I can go here to the Cave of Shadows, or I can go to the Cave of Embers way down here. So, as you can see, you have options. Uh, but I should point out, if both of these locations sink into the ocean, then you automatically lose the game. Separate the cards into three decks according to the card back. The flood deck, which is blue, the treasure deck, which is red, and the adventure cards, which are six of them. So the, these are the adventure cards right here. Just showing you that. Shuffle the flood deck and place it face down on one side of the island to form the flood draw pool. Draw the top six cards one at a time and place them face up next to the draw pile to form the flood discard pile. For each card drawn, flip the corresponding island tile over to its flooded blue side. So that would look like this. This is it's flooded, this is it's not flooded. So if I drew the Twilight Hollow, I'd flip it over to its flooded side, and if I drew it again after shuffling, I'd remove it and there's one less space on the island. Shuffle the six adventurer cards and randomly deal one to each player. Each of you will take on the role of an adventurer with a special power that only you can do during the game. Take a moment to read aloud your roles and the powers written on the bottom of the cards so that your teammates know your strengths. You'll find the game will be easier to win if you cooperate and take advantage of these special powers. Take a pawn matching the color of the adventurer card and place it on the corresponding island. Put any adventure cards 
and pawns back in the box. Note, it's okay to start on a flooded tile. Okay, so uh, there's a matching color tile for each one of these. Black for diver, the yellow for the navigator, the red for the um, engineer, and the green for the explorer, blue for pilot, and white for messenger. The diver is really cool. If a, an island tile is gone, his ability is if there's an island tile that's completely gone, the ability is right here. Uh, it's, a it's completely gone, sunk into the water. You can move on that tile. It's really cool. Uh, the navigator, normally when you're moving, you can't move diagonal. He can move diagonally. Uh, that's just a taste of some of their powers. So you can, I'll let you guys find that out for yourselves when you're playing the game or in our upcoming gameplay video on this game. Thoroughly shuffle the treasure deck and deal two cards to each player. Place your cards face up in front of you so both you and your teammates can easily see them. If anyone gets a Waters Rise card, give them a replacement card and shuffle the Waters Rise card back into the treasure deck. Place the treasure face down on one side of the island. Note, there will be a discard pile right next to the treasure deck. So I draw two cards and I got the Chalice of the Water which gives me one closer to actually physically owning that and a water's rise. So what's going to happen, I'm going to put these back in the deck. You put the water's rise back in the deck and we're going to start, we're definitely going to start our gameplay on novice here. And this is our um, water level. It tells us how dangerous it is. So right now you get to draw two cards, two flood cards from the flood deck. That's that blue deck. And then when you get a little more higher, eventually you draw three, four, five, and then you drown and die. Uh, so, you, when you draw that, you raise up the water level, you're still drawing two cards, and then you shuffle and draw two new cards. If I drew another water's rise, then it'd go up to three, and then that means I have to draw three cards per turn. Place the water level marker on the left side of the water meter, and set it to the appropriate starting difficulty level according to the type of game you want to play. For example, if this is your first time playing the cooperative game, set it to novice. Uh, this is, we are going for our gameplay video, we will be setting it to novice. So don't worry, uh, we'll probably get out alive. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. And that completes the setup. The player who last visited an island goes first and play continues to the left. On every turn, do the following things in order. Take up to three actions. Draw two treasure, uh, treasure deck cards. Draw flood cards equal to the water level. The back of every adventure card shows a quick reference guide. You may take up to three actions your turn on your turn. Uh, your teammates are allowed, to, are allowed and encouraged to give you advice on the best actions to take during your turn. Select a combination of any of the following actions. Move, shore up, give a treasure, capture a treasure. Okay, so let me explain how that works. So for move, you may move for one or more actions. Move your pawn to an adjacent island tile, either up, down, left, or right, but never diagonally. Like I said earlier, that's an illegal move. You may move onto a flooded tile, but may not move onto or over the space of a missing tile. So if it completely sunk into the ocean, you can't go there. Exceptions. The explorer may also move diagonally, like I said earlier. The pilot may move to any tile once per turn for one action. Like I, you know, I also said, that's what he does. Uh, if the navigator may move another player's uh, marker up to two adjacent tiles per action. So that's pretty handy if you don't really feel like it, but you think that your you really think your partner needs some guidance and or needs to get to that uh, spot. Let's say the tidal palace is gone. They really need to get to the coral palace, and it's about to go away. You got to move that guy. You got to get him there. And the diver may move 
through one or more adjacent missing or flooded tiles for one action. Uh, that means if a tile is completely gone, the diver can still go through. Uh, the diver is the black guy right here on the iron gate. He, start, he always starts on the iron gate. Uh, each one of these always start in a different spots. So the pilot always starts on the fool's landing. The explorer, the navigator always starts on the golden gate. The engineer always starts on the bronze gate. The explorer always starts on the copper gate. And the messenger will always start on the silver gate. I mean, that's it. So shore up. You may, for one or more actions, shore up any adjacent island tile, up, down, left, right, or the island tile your pawn is on. To shore up a tile, simply flip it over to, the, to its unflooded side, facing up. Exceptions. The engineer may shore up two tiles for one action. So the engineer is the red guy. Let's say that the Temple of the Moon and the Howling Garden is shored up. So for one of my actions, I can move to the Temple of the Moon. I can shore up the Temple of the Moon for my second action. And for my final and third action, I can shore up the Howling Garden because I'm the engineer. And that's just how it works. So we're just going to place that back. And that is how that works. I may also point out that the Explorer, the red guy right here, uh, he, he can not only shore up tiles uh, forward, back, but he can also shore up tiles diagonal. So like if I'm diagonal to the Crimson Forest, if that was flooded, I can shore up that uh, Crimson Forest if I was the, the engineer. I'm not, I don't know. It's all random. So fun. Uh, you, may you may also give one or more of your treasure cards to another player. If both of your pawns are on the same island tile, it costs one action for each card you give away. Uh, you may not give special action cards. So uh, let's say I go over to the copper gate right here. I'm the engineer. Let's say I'm the engineer again and I go over to the copper gate. I can give the person who is that character, the explorer, I can give them a, one of my treasure cards because let's say they have one, they just need one more uh, earth stone card and then they can get it. I give that to them and then on their turn they'll move to the Temple of the Moon and get it. But I can't just sit, sit at the Bronze Gate, uh, I can't just sit at the Bronze Gate and they can't just be sitting on the Copper Gate and go, hey, you want this treasure card? Yeah, sure, that's awesome. Okay, catch. Can't do that, that's illegal. Uh, but there is an exception. Of course, there's always an exception. The messenger may give cards without having to be on the same tile. So the messenger and only the messenger, so this little gray piece right here at the silver gate, he can give away treasures and not be on the same tile as them. Each one of these pawns all has an exception to the rules. Not all of them, just some of them. Okay, you may, for one action, capture a treasure by discarding four matching treasure cards from your hand. If your pawn is on either, uh, either corresponding island tile. Note, when you capture a treasure, discard cards to the treasure discard pile and move the figurine in front of you. You may capture treasures on a flooded tile. So even if the Coral Palace was flooded, and that means it's flipped over on its flooded side, you guys know what that looks like. I don't need to do that again. Uh, I can show... Uh, I can still get that. But, again, if it's gone, that's it. We're, we're done. We're done with that. And you can't, you can't try to get that anymore. So, you know, you better hope that uh, not both of them, you automatically lose if both are gone. So just remember that. After taking actions, you may draw two cards from the top of the treasure deck and add them to your face up hand. Draw one card at a time if you draw a Water's Rise card, do not add it to your hand, but follow the instructions on the card and then discard the treasure, treasure to the discard pile. There are five of each treasure cards in the treasure deck. The aim is to collect four of the same treasure cards in order of the corresponding treasure of Forbidden Island. 
you can give treasure cards to other players to give them a treasure deck. So I'm going to I'm going to do something that you shouldn't be doing. Okay. So there are five treasure cards. Here are four of the crystal of fire, which means I can take these four, put them in the discard pile and uh, like so, and then I can take this treasure when I'm on the shadow Cave of Shadows or the Cave of Embers. I can do that. Uh, but for now, we're just going to keep that so, you know, when we start the playthrough, there's not that much we need to do for that. Uh, there are two types of special action cards in the treasure deck. Helicopter lifts and two, three helicopter lifts and two sandbags that will help your team during the game. These cards are taken into your hand and can be played at any time, even on another player's turn. Playing special action cards does not require an action. Discard these cards to the treasure discard pile immediately when played. Note, you may use the power of a special action card if you are forced to discard it. So, you know, if you discard it here, I'm going to show you what those look like so you guys can get an idea. Uh, please do not look through the deck when you're actually playing. Uh, the game. That is, yes, that is a definite no-no, as most of you guys know, unless you have something that says so. Okay, so here's the helicopter lift, and here's the sandbag. The helicopter lift has got the same ability as the pilot. You can use this uh, to move anywhere on the map. You don't need, it doesn't matter, and it doesn't count towards your actions. The sandbags, you can shore up a card anywhere. It, you don't need to be near it, and it doesn't count towards one of your actions. So far, these cards seem pretty handy. I wouldn't use these as soon as you get them. I would use them when you need to use them. That's probably the most thing, especially if you're playing on uh, Elite or Legendary or even Normal. I would kind of hold on to those a little more. Novice, maybe maybe you can use them whenever you feel like. It, it's whatever you're comfortable with and how many players you're playing with. There are three Waters Rise cards in the treasure deck. When you draw a Waters Rise card, you must immediately do the following. Move the water level on the water marker up to cover the next tick mark on the water meter. Note how many cards will now be drawn at the end of each of your turn each at the end of your turn by looking at the number on the right of the meter. Take all the cards from the flood discard pile and shuffle them and then place them face down on top of the flood draw pile. So if this whole thing was in the discard pile, you just shuffle that up and then place it back. So that means anything that has a risk of going under completely underwater, they get a good chance to do it. So you might want to start shoring up some stuff. Uh, and then discard the waters card in the discard pile. Do not shuffle it uh, with the, if, if you need to shuffle your treasure deck, leave that there. Leave your Waters Rise discard pile right there because you just played that. Take the remaining portion of your discard pile and shuffle it in the treasure deck. Don't, don't do that because then you might just immediately draw the Waters Rise card anyways and that just narrows it down to two. That's just my advice. Note. If you draw a Waters Rise card, you do not get a replacement card. If you draw two Waters Rise cards in a row, shuffle the flooded discard pile only once, but move the water level marker up to tick marks. If you draw a Waters Rise card, but there are no cards in the flood discard pile, just move this up one tick. So two ticks if you draw two, so two ticks if you draw it up to two, if there's none, just do it one tick level, and then you'd have to draw three cards. That's just how that works. And we're going to put this back, because we are going to play at Novice, and I want to remember that, and I don't want to be torturous to Jordan. When the last card of the treasure deck is drawn, immediately shuffle the treasure discard pile and turn it over to form a new treasure deck. You may only have five cards in your hand, including treasure and special cards. If you ever have... If you ever find that you have six or more cards, for example, because you drew more cards or received cards from another player, you must immediately choose to discard the excess 
to the treasure discard pile. If you choose to discard a special action card, you may use its action before discarding it. So I would totally choose to discard a special, uh, a special uses uh, card. So that way I can use its ability. I can like shore up something if it's a sandbag, or I can move my character anywhere if it's a helicopter. That's, uh, but that's just me. After drawing two treasure cards, you must now take on the role of the Forbidden Island. Draw a number of cards from the top of the flood draw pile equal to the current water meter level. For example, if the level is at three, draw three cards. Uh, draw cards one at a time and place them face up onto the flood discard pile. For each card drawn, find the matching island tile and do one of the following. One, if the matching island tile is unflooded, flip it over to its flooded side. Two, if the matching island tile is already flooded, it sinks into the abyss. Remove it and the matching flood card from the game and place them out of play. Note, you cannot play a sandbag card to save a flooded tile once you've revealed the matching flood card. So I'm going to give you an example. Like I said, so you draw here and it says I, I flood the bronze gate. Then I would, as I showed you before, I'd flip it face down like here. And then if I drew this again after I shuffled my flood deck, I would remove it completely from the game. So that's just how that works. I'm going to put this at the bottom of the deck so we don't have to see that again. And um, yeah, of course, and of course, just be careful of that. And sometimes you'll get that water rises like three times. You'll get all three right in a row, like boom, boom, boom. It's crazy. So be careful. If a pawn is on a tile that becomes flooded, lift the pawn from its tile and flip it, and then return the pawn to the tile. So if the copper gate became flooded, I'd lift up the pawn on the copper gate. I'd flip it over, and then I'd place them back. Now. If a pawn on a, on a tile that must be removed, it must immediately swim to an adjacent tile, up, down, left, or right, that is still part of the island, even flooded. If a pawn is on a tile that is removed and cannot move to an adjacent tile, it sinks into the abyss and everyone loses the game. Okay, so, okay, so this is the explorer. If this is moved, then the explorer needs to either go here, 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 or here, and they'll be saved. However, if the diver, which is this black, if he was in there, he doesn't die, and he's OK. If the flood draw pile ever runs out, immediately shuffle the flood discard pile and stack the cards face down to form a new flood draw pile. If this happens in the middle of a turn, continue drawing flood cards as necessary from the new draw pile. Once you have collected all four treasures, everyone must move their pawns to Fool's Landing Tile. Then one player must discard a helicopter lift card to lift your team off of Forbidden Island. So we're going to play with a two-player game, like I've been uh, saying. So all these pawns won't be here. So you just get all your pawns to the Fool's Landing, right here. And then you play this helicopter lift card as I've showed you earlier in this video. And then you win the game once you have all four treasures and you play this, you get to the Fool's Landing. If it's flooded, meaning if it's flipped over on that white and blue side, then you still have a chance of winning, it's still good. But if it's gone entirely, well, you know, I'll explain that further down. There are four possible ways to lose. Number one, if both temples, caves, palaces, and garden tiles sink before you collect their respective treasures. I mentioned that earlier. Number two, if the Fool's Landing tile sinks. I did not actually mention that, I believe. Number three, if any player is on an island tile that sinks and there is no adjacent tile to swim to, excluding the diver. The diver can still swim to safety. It's no problem. 
I want to point that out. And number four, if the water level reaches the skull and crossbones. So I'm going to bring out the water level marker here. Let's say you drew enough to get it all the way up to five. If you drew one more water rises, then you have to get to the skull, then you'd have to lift it up to the skull and, skull and crossbones, and that means you can no longer doggy paddle, tread, or do whatever it is you're doing to clasp on to the little amount of life you have, and you lose the game automatically. So you could be like one treasure away, two treasures away, and then you can suffocate and die. Fun, right? I'm going to move this down back to novice. Uh, well, there you go. Uh, I'm going to set all these back to where they were. Uh, there you go. That's uh, there you go. That's our uh, entire rules of play for this game. Uh, I hope you're ready for this game. And that's all you need to know to play Forbidden Island. If you now, this is the novice section that we're playing in this. If you feel like it's a little too easy for you, go up to the next level and be on the lookout. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Twitter to find out what we're up to. Uh, don't for, also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and be on the lookout for our upcoming playthrough video of Forbidden Island. But until then, thanks for the views.